the incredible Danny Limelight Rivera. What's up, man? Dustin, first of all, nobody has ever called me the incredible Danny Limelight Rivera. You need to call me the Puerto Rican Poppy. You need to call me the Boricua Grim Reaper or something like that. This this whole incredible, whatever, that's Anthony Idol stuff. You know? Oh, man. Don't be, don't be mixing me up with these other bozos <laughs> in the locker room, Dustin. You know better than that. Man, no disrespect at all. I'm not trying to mix anything up. It's just when I see you in the ring and what you do, not only in the ring, but flying out of the ring, it reminds me of like the incredible Spider-Man or something. You're, you're all never, over the place. He's never ever been called the incredible Spider-Man, Dustin. It's the amazing Spider-Man, the spectacular <sighs> Spider-Man, radioactive Spider-Man. Dustin, listen, I'm about to hang up on you, man. You, you, you're don't like don't hang up. up. Watts hung up on me a couple of weeks ago, so you can't hang up on me because the people that are listening to this podcast, they're going to be very upset with me. So I promise I'll get it right. <laughs> all right. Let's try this again. Let's try this again. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. All right. You got to tell me all these nicknames. You've got so many of them, brother. Listen, you, you, let's just start with Danny Limelight Rivera. Can you handle that? Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, I have Danny Limelight Rivera right here with me, and I'm excited about it. No matter how much Maria, crap he gives I like, me. I like Maria better than you, Dustin. <laughs> Everybody likes Maria better than me. <laughs> What's up? What you got for me, Dustin? What you want to talk about? You know, I got, I got a date lined up in about 32 minutes, and we're on our way to Mofongos to get some arroz con habichuelas. You know, a little bit of tostones on the side, some martas, and a glass of wine for the pretty little Colombian lady that I got coming with me. So what you got for me? Hey, now. Well, first and foremost, congrats on all the success. In 2019, we started seeing you here on Memphis Television on CW30, and you said that it was going to be the year of the spider. But good grief, 2020, you are all over the place everywhere that I look. Yeah, 2019 was an amazing year for me. It definitely was the year of the spider. Um, there was a lot of things that happened that, that I think paved the way for 2020. You know, I came into 2020, I had a 2020 vision and, and I knew what I wanted to go with my career. I knew where I wanted to take it and I knew that I had everything I needed to get there. And I think that I definitely have been blessed, you know, to, to, to be doing all the things that I've been doing, you know, as you've seen this past week alone, you know, made my, 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 uh, my debut with Papo Esco, King Fat Boy, you know, we squashed on them little millennial brats. And the day before that, I was on New Japan Crown taking out Barry Brown in the first round. So I'm killing it right now. This week, I'm going into the, the semifinals against Blake Christensen in the New Japan Crown tournament. And, you know, if me and Papo want to go eat something, we're going to go eat whoever they throw at us. Well, I want, definitely want to talk about that because if there's two guys that I don't want to run into, not only in a wrestling ring, but in a dark alley somewhere, it's you and Big Papo Esco, man. Did you guys know each other before you started tagging? Because we saw it kind of unfold on Championship Wrestling presented by Pro Shingle after one of your matches, came back from the locker room and you see him standing there. What, what were you thinking? What's the first thing that went through your mind when you saw that? I was like dumbfounded. First of all, I was like, how did they let him in here? You know, that, that, that dude, that's a crazy, that's somebody that, I, you know, Abuela didn't even want him in the house when it was Thanksgiving dinner, let alone letting him into championship wrestling from Hollywood. So when I saw him, I thought he was coming to like grab me, yoke me up, tell me I forgot to, you know, upset at me because, you know, I sent him a little Boston Red Sox hat for Christmas one year. He had to talk to me since because I know he's a Yankees fan, but whatever. I, I, I was just fucking with him, you know, and I think that, you know, he, uh, he, I thought he was going to yoke me up for that, but it turns out that he, they let him in the building. They let my Theo Papo, my, 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 my OG come in here. And, and, and honestly, it feels good to have some backup, you know, since my cousin Gino ain't been around lately, you know, and, and things haven't been going the way I wanted to at, at championship wrestling from Hollywood. I think that having my, my, my Theo Papo Esco, the King fat boy in the building, that'll, uh, really shake some tail feathers. Well, i tell you what, it's a guilty pleasure of mine. I love seeing the millennials get beat up. So thank yeah. you for that. You're welcome. <laughs> they had they had some big mouths on them, you know. How they, they, were, they were calling King Papo fat boy. They were calling him fat and stuff. Are they crazy? Where they, where they, where they allowed to talk crazy like that at Dustin? Probably where you're from. No, man. I don't care what is his that nickname fact, is. You look like you could be a millennial. I don't, I don't care what his nickname is or anything. You're never going to hear me, especially to his face, call him King Fat Boy or anything like that. It's Papo Esco, man, to That's me. That's right. And he's a savage. He's a savage. <laughs> Um, so I learned a lot about Danny Limelight when I saw the video that aired on Championship Wrestling. Who is Danny Limelight? And it seems like ever since that aired, and I believe it was March or April, you, you've you been on absolute fire. Tell me about New Japan Pro Wrestling and how that all came about. 
Well, I, I, I would have to, you know, give a shout out to, to David Marquez. You know, I, I like to call him Theo Marquez because that man took me under his wing when I was just a little street rat, you know, looking for a place to wrestle. And, and he brought me to Championship Wrestling from Hollywood. And that's where I met Rocky Romero at when he won the PP3 tournament in 20, you know, 15, 2016 time frame. And I kind of just connected with Rocky because he's, he's another Boricua, you know, and he's somebody who's done it all over the world, you know. He's been in New Japan for, I think, close to 17 years now. He, he, he's killed it. He's killed it at Hollywood. He's been a mainstay at the United Wrestling Network for a while. Um, and and he's, he's just somebody that he saw something in me. You know, he invited me out to the tryout um, last fall, and I came out and I did my thing. And I'm just blessed to have gotten the call to say they wanted to use me. You know, I, I made my debut. I wrestled TJ Perkins, some, another man who's done it all in this business. And, and I kind of just been rocking and rolling with the steam that, that I got off of that. And... I don't have any signs of slowing down. You mentioned the United Wrestling Network. You premiered last Tuesday. You had your debut on live pay-per-view. Yes, sir. Primetime live. Loved it, man. Loved seeing you on there. What are the differences for you in wrestling something that you know is going to air later and wrestling on live pay-per-view? Is there any differences for Danny Limelight? Uh, I, think, I think for me, I don't care if I'm wrestling – uh, something that's going to be airing later. I don't care if I'm wrestling live on pay-per-view. I don't care if I'm wrestling in front of two fat people and a little kid who's picking his nose in the crowd. Danny Limelight gives 100% every time. I don't hold back nothing. I don't save anything for later. I go out there, I give him my all every time. That's why I'm a little disrespected by the fact that these fans are upset because of my new attitude with Papo Esco. Where was these fans at? When I'm getting stuff stuck up my nose for COVID just so I could go entertain them. Where were these fans at? You know, why, where was the, why isn't Danny Limelight getting a championship shot? They, was, they were nowhere to be heard, but now they're all over Twitter talking about my new a little alliance and, and my new attitude with Papo. Like, nah, man, listen. I, I've, I, I, I have done everything I could to please fans. I've done everything I could to please whoever's watching. But what matters most to me now is pleasing myself and working my ass off on live pay-per-view, pre-taped pay-per-view matches, pre-taped television matches, or on, and whenever the independent decide to come back, I give it my all every time. And anybody who watches Danny Limelight can attest to that. Talking to Danny Limelight right here, right now. And I want to ask you because... You, you are a very exciting wrestler. All the f real cool stuff that you do, you pop the fans, man. Is there a difference now and, and a difference in the way that you're having to approach your matches without having those fans present? Now, you do hear them on Twitter. Of course, you hear them chirping all over Twitter. But actually being in the audience, there's not really necessarily a crowd there or any cheers or jeers that you can feed from. Is that different for you? Yeah, the energy is different in the room. The atmosphere is de definitely different. You know, we don't have the people screaming cheering and booing all at the same time. We don't, we don't, we don't have that. I don't have that. But I think for me, you know, it allows me to stay focused. Um, and I think that anybody that's been watching that can definitely tell that I've been definitely laser focused lately. I feel like I'm, I'm hitting hard. I feel like more, more, more things are working in my favor as far as in the ring, outside the ring. I don't have to worry about, you know, little Johnny with his missing two front teeth in the front row crying. If I, if I, if I yank somebody's teeth or their mouth or their ear, if I kick somebody in the chest, I don't have to worry about the little, the little grandma in the back that's like, oh my God, he's, 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 he's beating up that person too bad. I I don't have to worry about any of that now. So I think that kind of works in my favor right now. I actually, I, the fans can stay away as long as they want for all I care. Um, but they need to go buy my merchandise at ProWrestlingTees.com backslash Danny Limelight. You're not only just doing wrestling too. You're, you're doing commercials and stuff now, right? I am. Yeah, yeah. I'm acting. I'm doing my own stunts. I just finished doing a commercial right now. I can't really say what it was for because the commercial isn't going to be airing for a couple months. But uh, it, was, it, it, it felt good to be back on a major set for a national commercial. Um, the auditions have been going well. I actually have a big audition coming up for uh, a, sh a show um, that I hope goes well uh, while I'll be acting and doing my own stunts. I will say that it, if you like bikes and you like gangsters and you like things like that on your television screen, I'm, I'll be auditioning for something like that. You know, I let the, let people listening go in and, and figure out what that is. Um, but it's been going great. I've been blessed to be, you know, as well as, as that stuff, you know, writing my own project, shooting my own project, producing my own stuff, staying busy. My daughter's staying busy. She's acting. She's having tons of auditions. Um, and we just killing it as a family, you know, me and my little one. So I'm blessed for that. And, and, and I think that, you know, there's only bigger and better things coming. We will be here to watch each and every part of it and help out any way we can. Danny, I appreciate the time, man. Yeah, Dustin, don't worry about it, man. Be easy, man.